This example involves a couple of questions from vector calculus. So we have a vector field, f, and we're asked to calculate the divergence of f, the curl of f, and also uh, a line integral. So let's work through this um, bit by bit. So let's, let's concentrate on part i first, and then we'll move on to the um, uh, second part um, in due course. Okay, so remember this sort of um, triangle Nabla type symbol is just referred to as the del operator. And it can act on vector fields or scalar fields in different ways. So for this particular example, let, let's calculate the divergence. Now, I actually prefer this notation with the dot because it gives you a hint on the action or the operation that's being performed. It's the del operator dotted with f. Now, we know the dot product from basic vectors, but we're not multiplying. The differential operators are acting on the components. So let me show you what I mean. So if I was to write these out using the dot product notation, it's just the vector here just written as sort of component. So if you actually you could actually write this without the i's, j's, and k's, just as sort of an ordered triple. Either way is fine, in my opinion. As long as it's clear that this really is a vector field. Okay, so down here we would write something like 8e to the minus x cosh z, hyperbolic cosine, and minus y squared. And now remember, a dot product, essentially, it's the first component with the first component, the second component with the second component, the third component with the third component, and you add them all up. But remember, because it's a special kind of symbolic vector, involving uh, a differential operator, these things are acting on the component functions. Not multiplying, acting. So if we were to expand this, you would just <coughs> Okay, now these two are going to just going to become zero. And this one's going to be something like minus 8e to the minus x. Okay? Note that our answer is not a vector. Our answer is a scalar function. Okay? So this is one of the differences between what you start with and what you finish with when the divergence is involved. Now remember the divergence gives you a calculation of the, vec the tendency of the vector field to spread away, spread away from a point. Okay, what about uh, the curl? The curl is slightly a bit more involved, and um, the, loosely speaking, the curl has to do with the tendency of the vector field to rotate. Okay, so um, let's see if I can squeeze this in. Uh, curl F. is just this cross product, again, loosely speaking. So, What I would like to do is expand that bottom right hand side along the top row. Okay? 
So for this, let's expand along the top row. It's basically just cover up, right? You start with the I. I is in the first column in the, in the top row. So you multiply I by the determinant of, of what you can see. Then you move on to the J. You cover up the row and the column that J are in, and you multiply J by the determinant of what's left. Don't forget the minus sign. And then you move on to the K, and you cover that up, and you multiply K by the determinant of what's left. Okay, so let's do that. So cover that up, look at the determinant of what's left. Don't forget the minus sign in front of the J. So cover up the J, the column and the row, look at the determinant of what's left. And finally move on to the K, cover up the K in the row and column that it's in and multiply K by the de determinant of what's left. Okay, so now it's just a, a matter of expanding the 2 by 2 determinants and we're going to end up with some vector. So our answer when we take the curl, should be a vector, or a vector field. Alright, now with 2 by 2 determinants, you just work diagonally. So it's that operating on that, minus that operating on that. Okay, and you just go through and um, uh, do it for each 2 by 2 determinant. So in the first case, we're going to get that on that, which is minus 2y that on that, the derivative of cosine, uh, uh, cosh, or cosine, shine, right, minus, okay, what about here, well, that's going to give you zero, that's going to give you zero, this one's going to give you zero, this one's going to give you zero, so there's nothing else there, okay, Okay, so our answer is a vector, and again, loosely speaking, the curl measures the tendency of the vector field to rotate or swirl around a point. Okay, well let's have a look at this question now. The line integral of f along the straight line from point A to point B. Anyone still going with this one? Alright, so let me take a new page then. Okay, so Essentially, what we'd like to do first is parameterize the line segment in a forward direction. And then what we can do is evaluate the, the line integral of my vector field along that line integral. Okay, so let curly C the straight line segment from point A to point B. How do we parameterize the straight line segment? Given two points, how do we parameterize the, st the straight line from one to another? Well, let me just draw a general picture that will work for all sorts of problems. Now I've shown you at least two ways to parameterize line segments. This is one way. 
Suppose this is my line segment. This is my point A and this is my point B. And what I can do is draw in the position vectors. And let's say that I've got some point on the line segment, like your variable point, and call it P. What we're interested in here is getting a representation for the vector OP. Now, if we know OA and we know AB, the vector AB, then OP is just this vector plus the vector AP. Now, AP is, it's no longer than AB, and it's, like I said, it shrinks down to, to the zero um, vector at the point A. So if we introduce a parameter, we can always get the vector AP in terms of, say, T times AB, where T is between 0 and 1. Okay, so so this vector here is just OA plus AP. And AP is but sort of, you, you can sort of form it from AB and just in, by introducing a parameter, T. So there is our general setup. That's one setup. I've shown you another, another setup where the, the equations like 1 minus T times the, the, the position vector of the starting point plus T times the position vector of the ending point. That's okay as well. All right, well, let's work out OA. Well, OA is just, just going to be this vector here. The vector AB is just this minus this. Okay, to work out the vector AB, you take the position vector of B, you minus the position vector of A. So this minus this, then, is just log 2. The 1's will cancel, and I get this. OK, so if I wanted to clean that up a little bit, I could just put it sort of under the 1 triple. And there's our parameterization. Now, I'll spend a little bit of time on that, because that'll work for any line segment. OK? So let's go through and work out the line integral. OK, so oh, actually, that should be a little squiggle under there. So think of this as being your position vector of any point on the curve, right? Now, let's compute the derivative of this vector function of one variable. We're going to need that to evaluate the line integral in a second. So for, for, for the line integral, you need the derivative of our parameterization and f evaluated along the parameterization. So let's differentiate these in a component-wise fashion. So I'm going to get log 2, 0, and 2. And the vector field, f, evaluated along our parameterization. Well, think of this as x component, this is the y component, and this is the z component. Just replace x with t log 2 in here, y with 1 in here, and z with 2t in here. So we're going to get something like the following. And I'm going to write it as a, as a triple or in here. So we're going to get 8e to the minus t log 2, uh, uh, cosh z, so I'll play z with 2t, cosh 2t, and I'll replace y with 1, so I'm going to get minus 1. 
All right, so let's get on to the line integral. We've set up all the components, if you like, all the parts. Let's actually go through and um, knock over the line integral. Now, the general notation for a line integral is just the following. Right? Now, this is rather abstract, so let's put it in terms of our parameterizations. Okay. Now the alpha and the beta are the limits on our parameter t. You can see up here, t is between 0 and 1. So alpha would be 0 and beta would be 1. What we do is we take the dot product of these two vector functions and integrate with respect to t. So for our problem, we'll get something like the following. Okay, so now let's take the dot product again, multiply the first component with the first component, second component with the second component, etc., and add them all up. So uh, the first one's going to give me something like the following. The second one's going to give me zero, and the third one's going to give me minus two. Alright, so this is now just a regular integral from high school that we can knock over to integrate the first term. Well, you can see the log 2's down here and the log 2's up here. So um, I can form the following. Just putting this minus sign because there's a minus sign up here. And the minus 2 is going to go to a minus 2t. So let's sub in our limits of integration and then we can clean up. Okay, now I can clean up that e to the minus log 2 a little bit. e to the minus log 2 is 1 over e to the log 2. And what's e to the log 2? Two, right? So this is going to become minus eight on positive two, minus four. So our answer will be two. <laughs>